Welcome back to our Beach YouTube channel. In today's class, we are going to learn how to make this beautiful adjustable jumpsuit with drawstring. So, on the waistline now, it can be adjustable. You want it fitted like this, you adjust it to fit it. And if you want it to be free, you just readjust it and you have a free jumpsuit. It's a very beautiful tutorial and it's really simple to make. If this is something you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. We are going to start by cutting the half length first. It's a cut together shoulder like a kimono. So I have my fabric folded into two like this. So I marked half an inch here which is going to be the allowance for joining the shoulder. So from there I'll start taking my measurement. My actual arm hole measurement is 9 inches. I want it a little bit free so you can hide from 1 to 2 inches. I added extra 2 inches and that leaves it at 11 inches. So I marked the 11 inches here and my my waistline is 18 inches, I added 1 inch extra to that as well, so I have 19 inches. So you just make all of that into a straight line. Then you come to your starting point here, which is the shoulder. So on the shoulder area, I'm going to mark my shoulder measurement. The shoulder is 16 divided by 2 is 18. So I'll mark 18 inches here. So from there, you're going to mark the sleeve length that you want to work with. It depends on whatever sleeve that you want to work with. So for me, I want my sleeve length to be around 9 to 10 inches around the elbow area. And then there, I'm going to add extra 2 inches to fold it. I hope we understand all that, okay? This is where my shoulder measurement stopped from there. I measured my, my sleeve length and then I added extra to it so here the measurement that i have taken here i'm going to mark it like this that's a total of 19 inches and then i'm going to connect i'm going to mark the 19 inches here as well so that i can have a straight line for my sleeve opening so on that point i want to do a shoulder slope of one and a half inches or one inch so i'll mark that look there and then with my ruler I'm going to connect to my neckline so the neck width that I'm going to work with for this is 3 inches so I'll mark the 3 inches there and then I'll connect from that 3 inches to the one and a half inches for my shoulder slope okay so that's what we have there so on this second line here I'm going to take my bust measurement the bust I'm working with is 44 divided by 4 is 11 so I'll mark 11 inches here it's a free jumpsuit as you can see so i had two inches extra for it adding two inches means i'm adding eight inches remember this is on fold it's going to be on fold by four so two times four is eight inches if you want yours to be bigger than that you can add it and then i'm going to add one inch for my seam allowance then i'll go over to my waistline as well the waist i'm working with is 38 inches very by four is nine and a half so i mark nine and a half inches here i'll add two inches for ease and one inch seam allowance as well for that so i'm going to go ahead and connect them together with my curve trailer okay so just connect it tentatively here so here i don't want any sharp points from this area you can see from here to here so i'm just going to give it like a smooth curve here I hope you understand that remember we came down by one and a half inches for our shoulder slope here so you may want to check if the sleeve length that you have is still accurate if it's not accurate you may want to adjust that for mine is fine for me so i'll just go ahead and cut so for the neckline i'm going to mark a neck depth of three inches for the front okay that's a tentative neck depth just for me to cut this out so i'll connect it like this and then grab my scissors and i'll cut this out so on the shoulder remember i had a half an inch allowance upwards to join so here i'm going to go ahead and mark out the half inch that's the allowance that i'm going to use to join it on the shoulder so here i'll cut out the neck depth I'm going to cut the shoulder slant and remember the shoulder is together with the sleeve here I'm going to come to the side and cut the side and here I'm cutting out the sleeve opening 
so this is what I have. You can cut the front and back together if you are not going to have a zipper. But I want to have a zipper to mine. That's why I'm cutting it separately. So now I'm going to fold another fabric. I'll include my zipper allowance and then I'll place this front on it. So I've placed this now. You cut the side the exact same way you have cut the front. The shoulder slope, you can see the waistline is the same. The only difference is going to be on the neckline because I don't want the neckline at the back to be low. So for the neckline at the back, I'm going to come down by two inches and then I'm going to connect. So that's going to be the neckline I'm working with for the back. So now placing my ruler, I'm going to connect them together like this. And if you notice, I now have my zipper allowance. So here to eliminate any zipper bulge on the waistline here, I'm going to come in by one inch and then I'm going to connect that in the vertical line like this. So then, so that's like taking a dart there so that I will not have any bulge on the zipper area. So here, I'm cutting it out. Ideally, if you do this for a fitted dress, you're going to have this back by the side. But because this is a free dress, we already have enough excess on it. That's why I'm leaving it like that. So now I've cut out the neckline. I've cut out the zipper bulge area as well. So I'm going to set this aside. So now for the front, you need to decide the type of neckline that you want for your front. You can leave it like this if you want. But for me, I want it to lie like a V neckline. Then I'm going to cut facing for it, which I will be sewing externally. So that will give it like some form of style there. So the neck that I'm working with is nine inches. Yours can be as deep as this or it can be it will not be as deep as this, totally up to you. So I'm connecting that to my neck point and I'll go ahead and cut that out. So that is the neckline that I'm working with for the front. If you open it out now, you can see that it's a V neckline. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and cut a facing and then I'm going to sew it externally for both front and back. So now we are done with the half length. I'm going to fold my fabric again for the trouser. So for the trouser, I have folded my fabric into two again. This open part here is going to be my starting point and that salvage area I'm going to rule it out because it's not going to be part of my measurement so I just assume that's my allowance and I'm going to sew on that point. So now I have taken that out so now where my new line is that is where my waistline is going to be. So on this side here I have marked out one inch okay that's going to be the allowance that I'm going to connect for my hip cuff. Okay, so now I have my waistline here and I have this one inch allowance. So on my from my waistline, I'm going to mark my crotch measurement. The crotch I'm working with is 12 inches. So I've marked that here and I made it into a straight line. So here on my waistline, I'm going to mark the waist measurements. Like I said, the waist that I'm working with actually is nine and a half inches. So just like I did for the for the waistline on the upper part i'm going to have the exact same allowance to this so that i'll have the same thing but if you don't want the allowance on the waist of your pants to be this much you can just work with whatever you want so whatever excess that you have on the half length you just split it around but i did not have too much allowance so i'm okay with what i had it so to this now i'm going to add the two inches is that i had it to the front as well and the one inch seam allowance okay that's what i'm adding on my waistline so all together now on this waistline i have about 12 and a half inches so what i'm going to do i'm going to come to the crotch area as well and then i'm going to mark the 12 and a half inches so if you notice i'm taking this measurement from this one inch it did not enter into here i'm taking it from this allowance here that i have that i have already marked one inch allowance so that's what i did on this part as well and then i'm going to make that into a straight line so that i can cut my crush curve i don't need my hip measurement for this so after marking out this line i hope it's visible on this crotch line i'm going to mark my tie measurement so this measurement you have to take it around your tie that's the fullest part of your tie and for me when i was taking this i took it very loosely i made sure to take it with the allowance that i want i took my actual hip is a, my actual tie is around 30 inches but i took this one very loosely so i had it about four inches when i was taking the measurement it's very loose that's how i want it to be on my body so after marking after connecting that i had 34 inches after measuring so that measurement now you divide that by two 
not four you divide that measurement by two and that gave me 17 inches so here i have 17 inches and i'm going to mark it here so for my crotch cuff i'm going to mark the difference that i have from here or you can just come to this center point here and mark one inches one inch sorry outwards like this so now after marking all of that i'm going to get a cuff and then connect and this center here is going to be like a reference point for me okay this one inch sorry i want it to be on the one inch mark okay so that is my crotch curve there i hope you can see so it's like a palazzo trouser if you want yours to be to be more fitted on the hem area you can just reduce it as you go if you don't mind you can just measure what you have here straight so on this part now remember our waist measurements was taken from the one inches why the why the time measurements was taken from the external measurements here the 17 i took it from outside so to reconcile them i'm just going to bring in my hip curve now and then i'll connect them together like this so that it can have a little bit of shape around that area so now like i said you can just take this measurement straight down for your for your full length my full length is about 16 inches so i'm going to be exhausting this fabric because the fabric is by 45 if i deduct the 18 inches from my half length what i have on this fabric is around 62 okay so i will need allowance to fold it that's why i'm leaving it like that so now for me i think i'm just going to work with what i have here so i'll just take this measurement all around i've chopped it down so what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and cut it out so it is as simple as that so after cutting it you go to the other side as well and then you cut out your hip so what we are going to do now is to fold this fabric again so that we can cut the back for the back because of the bone at the back i'm going to be adding few allowances to this measurement that i have so you can see my hip curve there so on the waistline here i'm going to cut out the shaping that we have on the waist and then from there i'm just going to cut it straight down just like this so that is it for the front so now i'm going to fold again for us to cut the back so i have folded the fabric into two again and this is the front so i just laid the front on it like this the side is going to remain the same you can see i have cut out the side is exactly the same the only modification is going to be on the center fold area so on my crotch line here i'm going to extend the crotch so here i've extended my crotch and i'm extending it by two and a half inches if the person has big bone you can do three inches so i extended my crotch by two and a half inches and then here where i have the crotch curve so i'll just bring in that part that has the measurements so that i can easily extend that as well so here where that curve is i'm going to extend this curve as well by 1.5 inches all of this is just to accommodate the bone okay so after extending it now i'm going to mark 1.5 okay i'm going to mark 1.5 inches there so you can see we did this by two in two and a half we did this by one and a half inches and then here on this upper part i'm going to add one inch to heat because a zipper is going to run through that as well so here i'm adding one inch to heat so there is a bum rise that we are supposed to do on this upper part here my fabric is not so long so i have shifted this because i want to do the bum rise by one inch it's going to it's very important because this is a jumpsuit i want to be able to sit comfortably in it so i'll just reduce the hemming allowance that i have on the lower side so here now after joining it i'm redrawing my crotch area so here the extension is going to shift downwards a little bit so i have two and a half inches extension there and then i've placed the front just like i explained earlier and extended the crotch as well by one and a half inches so here you can see the one and a half inches extension that i did is on this point so here i marked one inch for my zipper because to wear it easily a zipper is going to run through like that 
so now i'm going to take my curve driller and then connect all of this together so i'm connecting from the crotch curve to the crotch extension there and then from there i'm going to connect to the one hinge allowance that we added at the center back as well so you can see all of the extensions that i have done so here on the waistline remember you are going to sew the waist to the front so for it to be equal i'm going to take a straight ruler and then i'm going to connect from my center point here to the side diagonally like this if you have watched my tutorials on pants making this is going to be easy for you sorry so i will draw it just like this now i'm going to grab my scissors and cut this out so you can see that i have cut it as you can see this is extended by one and a half inches this by two and a half inches and then i marked one inch here and came up by one inch for my bum right so now to reconcile it to this side i'm just going to take a curve from this new extension now and then i'm going to blend it into what i have coming like this for the front just like this so i'll go ahead and cut this out so i've cut it out now you can see how i just blend it with what i have in front over there so the next thing now is to start sewing this so i have cut out facing so this is the front and like i said i'm going to cut out a facing that i'm going to sew externally it's just to give it some form of design in front so this is the facing for the front and this is the back remember the back is slashed so i have cut out two facing for the back as well I'm going to be sewing it externally so i will go ahead now and join the shoulder of the front to the shoulder of the back so you're going to detach it and then lay them on each other so i'll go ahead and join the front by the shoulder for the two sides i'm going to join it on the shoulder so after joining it on the shoulder i'm going to bring in my facing as well and then I'm going to join the facing on the shoulder as well. I notched the shoulder part so that I will not get confused. So I'll place it like this and join it on the shoulder separately. So after joining the facing separately, what I'm going to do now is to, sorry, right side facing right side. Make sure it is right side facing right side like this. So after joining it like this, I'm going to use the facing to turn out the main bodies but i'm going to be sewing it externally i have joined the shoulder as you can see and i've pinned the facing i joined the facing separately you can see it so now you're going to pin the right side of the facing to the wrong side of the main fabric you can see this is the right side of the facing this is the wrong side of the fabric then i'm going to sew it all around so that by the time i sew it i'm going to flip it over the right side like this so that the right side is going to lay on the right side and then I'm going to top stitch. So you just fold in it by half an inch and then top stitch round on it. So I'll go ahead and do this now. So after doing that, what I just need to do is to fold it over here on the sleeve area. I'm going to hem the sleeve and then I'm going to fold over the side seam and sew the side seam. Then we'll move to the pant. So I have sewn in the facing, as you can see, it just give it like a design on the chest area just like that so you make sure that it is as neat as possible so this is what it looks like and it's going to also turn the neckline for you so you can see the neckline is neat and this is the back as well so it extends from the front to the back and after that i hemmed the sleeve area the sleeve opening area i hemmed it and then i placed them against each other and so by the one inch allowance that i left on this side so i did this for the two sides so the only open the only open part that we have here now is the center back where we're going to pass our zipper so that is what i'm doing for the lower part for now so now we're going to move to the pants so for the pants you're going to sew the crotch of the front separately you are going to sew the crotch of the back as well separately so after sewing the crotch i'm going to open it up like this i don't want this to be too long that's why i am if i sew it i'll still explain so after sewing the crotch and it's together i'm going to open the under area and then i'm going to sew it on the under area as well before joining it by the side what we are doing is we are joining the front and back separately 
before you join to your you are joining the trouser and the half length separately you can also join them together if that is what you want but i've already joined my half length so i'm going to join the trouser part separately so for the trouser you just need to sew your crotch you sew the under area of your the inseam that's the under part of your trouser before you sew it by the sides so i have gone to sew it just like i said you're going to sew the crotch then after sewing the crotch you're going to sew the under area okay the inseam so you can see from one leg to the crotch and then back to the other leg that's where the open part of the of the pants is so after sewing that together that's front and back together i went ahead to sew it by the two sides so you can see that so this is the back i did not sew the crotch of the back up to the waistline because i'm still going to fix a zipper there that's why i left it like this so what I'm going to do now is to flip it to the right side. So on this side area, you can fix a pocket to yours. I think I'm going to still losing this and fix a pocket. That's if I want. I have a tutorial on how you can fix inseam pockets already. So you can check that if you want to know how to do it. You can see how big my the leg of my pant is. So if you don't want yours to be this big, I think I explained what to do in the when we were drafting it. So this is what we have. So now I'm going to bring in the um, the upper part here and then you start matching your notches together. So I want to put it together and notch the center front. So just make sure that all your notches, they match. So this center front now, I'm going to pin it with the center of the pants. So after matching the center front, you go ahead and match the side seam. But for me, luckily, you can see they are exactly the same because I use the same allowance for the two of them. But if yours is not exactly the same, okay, if the upper part is bigger, maybe you added extra, extra allowance. All you just need to do is match your side seam like this. So after matching it, the extra allowance that you have, you just split it to the pants area. But if you cut it the exact same way that I mentioned, it's going to be exactly the same, just like I have it here. It's exactly the same for for me. So now I'll pin it around and then go ahead and sew. So after sewing it now, I'm going to bring it back for us to create the casing for the drawstring. So you can see the other side matches as well. So I'll go ahead and sew this now. So I have joined the upper part to the trouser now. This is the waistline. So you just join here and weave it. So now the next thing is to create casing for the for the rope that we are going to use to adjust it to make it fitted. So for that casing, all you just need to do is to measure your waistline. We are going to cut two because we are going to be cutting it at the back. We are going to open it at the back. Remember there is a zipper at the back. So this is my center front here. I can see the seam line with my crotch crotch uh, sewing here. You can see this is the center front. So now from that center front, now you can measure two inches. But for me, because of this design that I have, I'm just going to use this as a reference point. So I will start sewing it from here. You can also sew it from the center front, depending on what you want. So from here now, I'll measure what I have from the center front all the way to the center back. Then after measuring this, I have about 21 and a half inches. So you use that to cut out a fabric. This fabric is about 22 inches. Okay, you can see it's about 22 inches in length. And then the width is going to be around 2 inches. So I folded half an inch on both sides. So I have 1 inch here. So now at that center part, I'm going to fold this part in. I don't want it to be showing. So I'm going to fold this part in and then place it at the center part there where you want it to start. So after placing it there, I'm going to sew on both sides. So you need to fold this in before you sew because you are going to pass a rope. You should be able to go through it like this. So I'm going to place it at the midpoint here and then sew it all the way to the back. So I'm going to sew into the to the zipper allowance so that the zipper can hold it for you. So I'll do this for the two sides and then we'll pass a rope through. So I have created the casing on both sides as you have seen. So I've made my rope. So all you just need to do is to pass the rope through this casing and then you bring it from the center back. Your casing can be five inches wide. Sorry, 
it can be more than one inch wide like this it can be half an inch it can be two inches depending on what you want so i'm passing this to the back and when it gets to the back you can either pin it down or take it to your sewing machine first and hold this down with a stitch so that it doesn't shift so you can see the rope now so just secure it somehow because you are going to use your zipper by the time you sew in your zipper at the center back it's going to hold everything together for you so now you can adjust this to any size with this rope i'll do the same thing for the other side as well and i'm going to fix a zipper at the back so i'll do this and bring it back to show as well so this is what it looks like on the mannequin you can see the design we created with the facing so this is the drawstring on the waistline you can just draw it to make it fitted and you want it to be free you just need to loosen it up and this is what the full view of the jumpsuit looks like you can see it is very simple to make and it's really beautiful and comfortable i hope you enjoy making this beautiful tutorial with you if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye